subscribe. Hey guys, Spray and Pray here, and today we're going to be doing a very different video on my channel. We are going to be reviewing a knife, specifically the SOG Flash 2 in the Tanto configuration. So to start out, I'm going to give you guys some information about myself and this knife in particular. I have been carrying this knife every day to high to not not high school, <laughs> uh, to university classes, to my work at Geek Squad, to everywhere that I go. I usually carry this unless I'm going to like a movie theater or something like that where they they might you know get crazy about it. Anyways, I've been carrying this every chance that I get for about a year now. I bought it. Um, I think it was last uh, what is it, July? I think it, I actually did buy it last July. So I've had this with me for about a year and. It's not. It's held up very nicely. I think that for a forty-five dollar knife, it has definitely lived its life, and the f very few issues that I have with it can be easily overlooked with the forty-five dollar price tag in mind. So let's go over a few of the features, and we'll see what you actually really do get a lot of for only forty-five dollars. The first and most obvious feature of the SOG Flash Tanto and uh, other Flash designs are that it is, an, it is an assisted opening knife and what that means is that the knife has a little spring in it which we'll see later when I disassemble it that actually allows you to it'll help you push the blade out. Now it's not a switch blade or anything like that so it's not illegal so calm down. <laughs> it's, it's totally legal and you can carry it in most of the places in the United States but you should probably check your local like city and or county laws because sometimes they have specific ordinances against uh, any sort of spring assisted knife but most of the places I'm done and I'm saying like in general uh, have no laws against this and this is no different than just a regular pocket knife in the eyes of the law most of the time now the assisted action is you can actuate it uh, by pushing on this little pin here you're if it was a manual knife it's basically the same way you would open it you just push a little bit here and the only thing that's different is that once you get to a certain point the spring takes over and it pushes it the rest of the way out for you now this feature is pretty cool and a lot of people who don't know about knives will be like oh my god it's a switchblade it's illegal oh that's so cool and I, I mean it's kinda nice for that <laughs> I'll admit that I, I did um, uh, for a knife, you know, it's you got to think about what's your philosophy of use for the knife. And for me, what I use it for at my job is opening boxes, uh, you know, helping pry things apart a little bit sometimes. But mostly, it sits in my pocket, and I bring it out and I show some people if if they're interested or if they they want to maybe perhaps buy a knife of their own. And for that purpose, this works fantastically. It's forty five dollars, like I said, so you know you're not going to waste a bunch of money, but you still get a really good quality product. Now let's talk about the actual shape of the blade. This is the Tanto configuration and therefore, uh, you know, big big round of applause, we got to uh, build it up, the tension. It has a Tanto shaped blade. What that means is it's got the little, uh, you know, triangle, your triangle, your shaped point on the end of it. And this is supposedly to help with uh, self-defense and because I guess you could, you know, poke somebody with it pretty good. Um, Honestly, if you're not such a big fan of the Tanto design, if it doesn't look aesthetically pleasing to you, then I would 100% go with the actual curved blade because that's way easier to sharpen. With this, since it kind of has two edges, you have to sharpen them separately, and if you sharpen them together, you'll kind of start to get a uh, rounded tip. And you can see on mine, since it's pretty old, I've been sharpened. I've sharpened it a few times. And uh, you know I'm very guilty of not being good at sharpening, so uh, you can tell that it's kind of rounded off a little bit there. In addition to the the tip <laughs> is broken off because I may or may not have stabbed it into something that I should not have. Anyways, let's continue with the features. Moving on down, uh, it has a thumb stud, and that that's the thing you push to help it open on both sides. So if you're a left-handed person and you want to put it, or if you just want to put it on your left side, it's totally fine. You can do that. It has the ability to be used as a righty or on the other side as a lefty. Now there's the slide lock, which is a uh, I think there's another brand that actually like patented this and made this popular, but it works just well on the slide on these SOG knives. So basically you just pull it back and that lets you push the blade back in. Yeah. And it stays there pretty snug. It's not going to fly out on you even though there is a spring. You actually have to push it kind of pretty far for it to actuate. And I mean honestly on a regular knife if you did that it would probably open up the rest of the way anyways. 
Now moving on down, you do have a safety. I can tell you that I have 100% never used this safety. Now, I mean, I understand why they put it there. If you're afraid of the knife opening up in your pocket, you can engage the safety, which would be pushing it down, and then it won't open at all. However, I think this is more of a gimmick, and this, in practice, is not a very good thing to have. I mean, because it's more likely, it's more likely that this safety will accidentally get actuated and put on in your pocket than it is for the blade to accidentally come out. In my entire year and, and a few days of carrying it, it has never once opened in my pocket. So I can safely say that this safety, while a nice addition and it probably makes you know your mom or somebody feel a little bit better about you carrying it, it really doesn't actually add any you know benefits to the knife. Uh, on the other hand, I will say that I've never actually had the safety go on while it was in my pocket and then pull it out and, you know, if I needed it and have the safety be on and have to take it off. So, I mean, it's an addition and it doesn't really detract or add to the knife. So I feel like it kind of should be eliminated in order to just save weight, if anything else. However, it is there. So, like I said, your mom will feel better about it. Anyways, moving on down to the end here, this is probably the greatest strength and greatest weakness all rolled up into one for this knife, and that is the pocket clip. And if you've seen pictures of this knife online, like on Amazon or other places, it may look like, oh god, it's broken, and that's probably because it is. And as you can see, it has quite a bit of wobble to it, and it, goes, it plays up and down as well. And this is unfortunate because I really like this design. As you can see, the clip extends beyond the end of the knife so that allows you to shove it in your pocket and when you have this in your pocket you can't actually see anything so except for the little light clip so imagine this is my pocket here I'm gonna have to play with the camera so imagine this is my pocket and this is where my pocket stops right here so this is all you could maybe see if you were really lucky I can probably even get it up into here and so all you would see is just a little clip on the outside of my pants and it looks like it's maybe a flashlight or anything so you don't have to worry about people freaking out being like oh he has a knife he's gonna murder everybody um, because obviously with a knife it would be really hard and plus nobody nobody wants to murder anybody alright okay so uh, that's about it for all the features of the knife um, I want to spend a little bit more time on the pocket clip and tell you guys maybe why it's like this. Um, my car is a little older and it has some weird lining on the outside and it gets caught here and it pulls it up uh, on the edge because this is a really big end here for a pocket clip that I've, from all the other knives that I've handled, this is the largest. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because it's easy to pull it out of your pocket because you can just put your finger under this and since so much of it is in your pocket you kinda of have to rely on this sort of thing to pull it out since you can't really get a good grip on the end since it's all the way in your pocket so this being out like this I, I like it but it does lead to the pocket clip becoming you know unstable and now just more information about this specific knife I actually have broken the the allen screw here it's sheared off the head is completely free from the the body of the screw and it's kind of just sitting in there because I've had to take it out and put it back in and you know bend it back and put it back in so many times that the screw actually gave out here now uh, it doesn't actually affect the performance really except for that it can go like this a little bit and it's not super annoying however it is a thing and since this is a review I want you guys to know that that is a potential failing point especially if it really got caught like if you you know got this on the inside of something and like stood up or like ripped away from wherever you're sitting it could destroy the pocket clip and you could have like instead of it just being up a little bit like this for like it is on mine you could have it just flying out you know crazy out this way or something and maybe like poke yourself I don't know anyways this pocket clip like I said is a great thing it's just it, the things that make it great also kind of detract a little bit from it so I there's no way that you could improve the design I don't think because if you were to change this at the end here it'd be harder to pull out of your pocket if you were to make this you know further down so that you could grab it here instead of here then it wouldn't be as concealed carry as, as concealable so I don't know um, it's kind of a, like I said a double-edged sword I like it if you like it that's up for you to decide so that's I'm just giving you the facts you gotta make your own decisions alright so that's pretty much everything about the knife 
Now we're going to do a tear down here and I'll show you how that's done. It's actually really simple and I think that anybody who owns this knife or owns any knife in general should pretty much know how to take it apart even though it's assisted opening. So for assisted opening knives you want to actually have it open when you take it apart because then there's no more potential energy or stored up in the spring so you don't have to worry about it flying out on you when you open it up the rest of the way. All right? And it just takes a one, one Allen key or Allen screwdriver thing like I have and sorry my hands getting away in the way of the light but I, I know I'm just gonna do these undo the screws there's this really nice nut I this is like the nicest screw I have ever seen if you can see it's got like this nice texture on it so that feels really good in your hand when you've actually grasped when you're actually grasping it it's not obtrusive or abrasive at all all right and then this screw here there's actually three along the top three Allen screws so we'll take those three out. I'll probably fast forward this. All right, so with all the screws out, then the uh, the last screw you want to take out is the one for the pocket clip back here. Um, on mine, like I said, it's broken, so it actually won't come out. It's just the head in there anyway, so it's not holding it together at all. But you would want to, if you have a brand new one of these, you would want to take out this screw and slide the pocket clip out the back. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove this side of the knife. Now I'm not going to take the actual blade out of the housing so because it's kind of a bitch to get the stupid spring back in place and that's a little bit more in depth than I want to do on this video. Um, but if you do happen to get the spring to pop out or something like that, it's pretty easy. It takes a little bit of time to get it back in but if you just are patient and work with it, it'll go back in. All right. So this is the other, the other half. It's just got the cutouts for all the little bits to move around in. All right, and I'll pick up this side here and we have the knife out so it's not going to jump around or spring up on us and you can see all the little like fun little metal internals here and it, you kind of get a little feel for how everything works um, the safety and everything like that um, you see there's this little notch here in the here I'll use the screwdriver to point it out there's this little notch in the back and that this bar here goes up into that notch and that's what uh, Sorry, I know I'm like totally off camera. Anyways, that notch is where the little uh, bar here goes up when you have the safety on. So it's a very secure design, so you don't have to worry about it. If, if you're absolutely terrified that this thing is gonna pop open in your pocket, you can engage this and be very sure that it's not gonna do that. Now the liner lock here, you can see how it works. It's got a little bar, and then when you pull on this, it pulls the bar back and the spring, you know, it pulls, pushes it forward. It's a very secure design. There's very little wobble up and down on the knife. Like up and down, I think there was like I can't feel any. Even with the side off, I'm I, I'll put it back together and try again. But there is hardly any wobble. So and you can see there's little bearings here and then uh, stuff to make the sliding action of the knife a little bit more easy. Right. And as opposed and if far from a few pins and stuff. And then on mine, you can I'll show you the actual brokenness of it. So the pocket clip here you can see there's a screw that's like embedded inside of it and I guess it works um, it, it still functions as a pocket clip but it is broken as you can see so we'll put it back together now it's very easy you just do the same process in reverse if you completely disassemble it like take all the little bits and stuff out um, you know take a look here <laughs> everything here is aligned properly and it's it's kind of weird because there's a couple different ways orientations you can have this this bar in and there's a couple different notches that it actually fits on so uh, if you just take a pay, cl pay close attention here you'll see this is the correct orientation for all the innards all right so let's get this other half of this thing back on and once we got the knife back together we'll close out with some final thoughts
All right, so that's the Flash 2 Tanto by SOG, and it's available usually on Amazon. Sometimes it goes on sale for cheaper, but I think right now it's about $45, and for that price, I don't think you could possibly beat it. As a, I don't think there's any other assisted opening knife that's out there on the market right now that beats SOG as far as the amount of features that you get with this, as well as the durability and concealability. I, I've never seen another knife, uh, and it, please, if you can correct me or find something else that contradicts that, I've never seen a knife that had such a very awesome concealing, concealable pocket clip. And that's 99% of the reason why I really like this knife is because it's covert and you don't have to be worried about people freaking out that you have a knife. You know, they think they're going to be like a mass murderer because you have a, a tool, a tool to open boxes and maybe cut like some string or something uh, in your pocket. Um, and and the, that pocket clip here that allows you to be incognito really helps and eliminates 90% of any of the issues that you'll ever have. Um, like I said, I carry this at university. There's no, uh, I would definitely not take this to a high school or a, a middle school, elementary school, anything like that, uh, because especially in the United States, they have very strict laws. My university is, uh, you know, we're all adults there, so they operate by the same rules as Fairfax City. And to my knowledge thus far, there are no laws or ordinances saying that you cannot carry uh, pocket knives at, or pocket tools. They're tools. And that, that's the key there. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please let me know if you have any comments or you know suggestions that could help me improve these videos in the future. I hope to be doing a lot more review type things. So if there's anything that you specifically want me to review, please let me know. I have a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff. Um, I have other knives. I have airsoft guns. I have like Legos. I don't know if somebody wants to see that. Uh, just let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to do any of the stuff that you want to do. Anyways, let's close it up and open it one more time just for, you know, for fun. And here we go. Oh yeah. Spray and pray out.